All right, and now let's go over the uh, last uh, part of this video that's on application. So vectors are useful in many aspects of physics and engineering. Uh, in future videos, we will see how they describe the velocity and acceleration of objects moving in space. Here we look at forces. So a force is represented by a vector because it has both a magnitude measured in pounds or newtons and a direction. So if several forces are acting on, on, uh, uh, on objects, or actually on an object, the resultant force experienced by the object is the vector sum of these forces. And that brings us to example seven. So example seven here, it has uh, so a hundred pound weight here uh, hangs from, uh, from two wires. You have two wires right here shown in the figure below. So when you have two wires like this, this is going to split up the forces according, according to the angles there. Yeah, for example, if you wanted to, if you had a rope like this, uh, if, you have, if you had a rope here that's vertical, holding a big giant ball, and then you had another uh, rope that's horizontal, this one is experiencing no vertical force. So all the force goes to here. And then basically as you adjust this angle, as you adjust it accordingly, so you move this up, uh, and then it's going to shift, uh, shift the weight accordingly. So basically, just basic uh, geometry right here. I mean, uh, trigonometry. You can basically do some trigonometry to, sp and to see the components of the horizontal and vertical and so on. And we will get to that. So here we have T1 here is uh, this 50 degree angle there. And this tension 2 in this cable is 32. Uh, it has a 32 degree angle there and there's a 100 pound weight that's being held up by these two cables or wires. And we're asked to find the tensions or forces. Tension is just being pulled. So this is being stretched apart. Uh, and yeah, T1 and T2 in terms of their horizontal and vertical components. So these T1, T2 are vectors. They have both a magnitude, the force uh, in pounds or newtons, and it has a direction. This one's direct, uh, directed to the right. This one's directed to the left at this angle, at these angles, 50 and 32 degrees. All right, so let's take a look at the solution. So we first express the vectors T1 and T2, or the tensions T1, T2. Yeah, in terms of their horizontal and vertical components. So from the figure below, we see that. So let's just uh, break these down. So we have here is going to be, well, the tension here. And then, uh, well, so this is a bigger angle. So this is 50 and this is 32. So it's more steep. So let's go like this. Let's start, just draw a triangle. This one's going to be more steep like this. And this one's going to be more to the side like that. So we have these angles like this. All right, so we have this angle here. This is 50 degrees. This angle here is 32 degrees. Yeah, so that is uh, not as steep as this one. So 15, 32. And now what we have is the tensions. And I'll draw this arrow like that, this arrow. This is going to be our T1 vector. This will be our T2 vector. And now the horizontal components, well, if you look at this right here, just using our, uh, tr or, uh, our geometry, uh, this one right here is just a Z right here. This one has the same angle uh, across over to here. What we could do is, this is this angle. So, so this has vertical and horizontal components, whereas this angle is 32 degrees. Now, yeah, this is exactly the same thing. This is just mirrored. So for example, if you had a, if you had a Z, this angle is the same as this angle. Those are the, yeah, this basic uh, geometry. Yeah, and actually, I'm going to keep the Z here. The note. Note this angle. Yeah, this angle is equal to this angle. <laughs> it's just the exact mirror image of that. So those are the same angles. Likewise, this, this 50 has this angle here. So you could use it across here. I yeah, draw that there. Draw this here. This is going to be our uh, across here 50 degrees. All right, so that's what we have there. Now we have the arrow down. This is just the uh, W vector, or the weight, and that's just uh, this is the W is 100. All right, so that's what we have there. So from the figure below, we see that, and then we're going to break this down into its components, make this a bit better vertical line. And uh, we could also do another note. So note that one on the Z, but also note that if you had a triangle, just use basic uh, trigonometry. So the lengths 
R. So if this is, let's go, this is our A. Yeah, here. So if that's our A, this is our angle, then the horizontal one right here, this is just going to be, well, let's say it's B. Actually, let's say, let's do this as C. Let's say that's C, this is A, and that's B. A, B, and C. So then, remember, the ratios cosine theta is equal to A over B, and sine theta is equal to, yeah, this is, I mean, A over C. Sine theta is equal to the opposite over uh, adjacent, so this would be over C. Like that. So in other words, you can just move the C all over to the other side. So you get A. Now this equals to C cosine theta. And this one here is equal to C sine theta. So we could use that for over here. So we could use that here. And we could write this out. So we could write this T1 a vector. So the T1 vector in its component parts is equal to the horizontal over here and that's going to be negative because we're going to we're going to say this is positive this is negative and then uh, going downwards or yeah going upwards is positive and going downwards is uh, negative like that yeah here just uh, fix that up so we have plus plus and then minus minus so in other words t1 is going to is going to equal to negative then using the same setup where it's going to be the length t1 of this vector times it by the cosine of that angle. So that's just this part right here, C cosine uh, theta, where the C is the length there. So C, um, this is going to be uh, the length of the T1 tension times it by cosine of the angle, in this case is 50 degrees. And then, uh, and then that's the horizontal, and the vertical is going to be over here, and that's going to be the sine. So plus the length T1 of the vector T1 times it by sine. 50 like that and uh yeah we forgot to actually add our, our vector uh so this is we need to put in the components parts otherwise this is just an, a scalar so we're gonna have the, our i vector this is going i to the uh, opposite there and this one's gonna be j vector like that the, the center basis vector so we're just to say that we're doing it in uh, yeah we're writing this as a as a vector with its components uh, added up in standard basis vector form otherwise if you didn't have those then you're just going to have a, a random number that you're uh, summing up so now the next one is t2 is over here so this t2 its component parts is going to be both positive and then it's going to be cosine 32 uh, then it's going to be plus sine uh 32. So this is going to be equals to the length t2 vector cosine of 32 degrees and this can be i uh, i vector form plus t2 arrow and then sine uh, this is going to be 32 degrees j like that all right so the next setup here uh is well the resultant uh the resultant sum of these forces t1 vector plus t2 of the you know, the tensions or forces counterbalances the weights is w and we must have so now we we determine the top positive so that means to make it equal to the bottom, which is the, the negative, we have to have T1, the vector, plus T2, the vector, is equal to, it is equal to negative W, the vector. So it's equal to the negative, because uh, here, yes, yeah, so we have 100. So then this needs to add up, yes, yeah, so add up and equal to this uh, negative of this. And in other words, actually, uh, more clear like that. So if you sum up all these vectors, so plus this W vector, this has to be zero because it's counterbalancing it. So there's no net force. In other words, we can move this over, and then we're gonna get, um, yeah, we're gonna get t1 plus t2 vector equals to negative w vector, which equals two. Well, we know that w as vector is pointing downward, so that's gonna be negative of uh, it's gonna be negative of negative 100. Um, this is gonna be 100. We're going up here, so it's a hundred pounds right here. So this is a hundred pound weight. It's going down, and then it, and then its vectors are well j. It's going to be uh, one hundred, and this is going to be uh, j like that. So it's just vertical. So then this is going to be positive. This equals to one hundred j like that. Or even more complete, you could write this as uh, equals to zero i vector plus 
100 j vector yeah so in other words the there is no net uh, horizontal force there there's just zero being pulled there's a weight only going straight down all right so thus what we have is uh now what we'll do is well t1 well uh, actually instead of writing thus i'll just i mean yeah instead of typing i'll say thus here's just so it matches the look so we'll have t1 uh, vector plus t2 vector this equals to well, let's add these vectors around so this equals to yeah this equals to well this vector plus this one and since it's pretty big already I'd rather not write it again so what we could do is factor out these eyes like that just factor out this and this so then uh and and likewise for this one here so we could just add the components there's just uh, vectors so we're adding the components so this equals so you could write this as bracket negative and then the distance uh, or the length t1 cosine 50 degrees and then plus this part right here plus t2 vector cosine 32 degrees all right and then this is going to be our i so we factor that out put the arrow across and now that's going to be the i then the, the j part is going to be this one here so we're going to factor out these so and then we're going to add up the other part there and notice the angles are, are changing so cosine 50 and then cosine 32 and the other one's going to be t2 sine the t2 length sine 50 and then the other one's going to be uh, sine 32 uh plus no this is t1 yeah, so the T1 and then the T2. T2, yeah, just write that out. T2 uh, vector sine 32 degrees, and this is the times it by the J basis vector, the vertical one. And now this again equals 2. Yeah, this equals 2. Well, this right here, 0. So T1 uh, plus T2 is equal to 0i plus 100j. So this can be 0i just for completeness. Yeah, this is going to be 0i plus 100j. All right, so continuing further. So now equating components. So you uh, you have to make these all equal to 0, the components, for the i, and then for the other one, the j's need to equal to 100. And solving for t1 and t2, we get the magnitudes of the tensions. So the components need to match up. So yeah, this these ones right here need to match up with this. So we need to equate them. So this means that... We're going to have this i component needs to need this one needs to turn to zero. And the other one needs to be 100. So in other words, yeah, we are going to get, so then this whole thing is zero there. So negative t1 vector, the length, and then this is going to be times it by cosine. So we're, it's going to be the vertical, I mean the horizontal components, so those are all cosine uh, 50 there. And then this is going to be plus length t2 vector times by cosine 32. So the T2s have 32, T1s are the uh, 50 angles or degree. This needs to equal to zero. So the components need to equal to zero or just vanish there. And this other one needs to be 100. And now the next setup is going to be T1 vector sine 50. Yes, yeah, so the sine is the vertical ones, then T2 is the 50 is the T1. And then 32, angle is the uh, T2. This needs to equal to 100. The components need to match up. All right, so now we could solve for these. Well, first one here, what we'll do is solve for T2 in this one. So we can move this over to the other side and then divide out the, uh, the cosine 32. So in other words, we can get a T2 is equal to uh this equals two yeah this equals two so t2 move this over there is going to be uh the vector t1 or yeah, the length of the vector t1 it's gonna be positive now cosine 50 and then we're going to divide by this 32 so in other words we're going to get a cosine 32 like that all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna box this so this is the t2 we're gonna box this and then we're gonna throw this. I'm gonna move this down more, do a better arrow. All right, so this goes here and make this uh, 
bit smaller. And now we throw this inside, and that uh, we're able to get an equation with just T1. So throw that inside, and then we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get a T1 sine 50 degrees plus, now we're gonna get, we'll throw this inside, so we're gonna get a T1 um, length, times by cosine 50 degrees, cosine 32 degrees, degrees, and then times it by the sine 32, times by sine 32, like that. And now this whole thing equals to 100. And now this part right here, these two, just becomes, well, tan. This equals to tan 32. Yeah, so sine over cosine, remember that's just definition of just tan. And now we get this whole setup is, and we could factor out the T1s. So we get the T1 length is going to be equal to, let's so factor this out, put a bracket sine 50 degrees plus, as we factor that, cosine uh, 50, let's put this here, cosine 50 degrees times the by a uh, tan 32 degrees this all equals to 100 and uh, now we could just divide this out move it over there and then uh, put this in a calculator we get t1 uh the length equals two all right yeah so we get 100 divide this whole thing so 100 uh, divide this by now we're going to get sine 50 degrees plus yeah plus uh cosine 50 degrees times by tan 32 degrees and now this is equal to roughly equal to if you put this in the calculator 85.64 lbs or pounds so 85 pounds like that and again, this is a length or magnitude. Length of the vector is magnitude of the force. All right, I'll put an arrow here. So that is our T1, the magnitude. But now the T2, and the T2 should be less. That's one thing we should notice. that Because this angle is steeper, the T1 should be larger than this T2. And uh, now the T2, we know that is this part right here. So the T2, we could throw in our value for T1. And I'll do a calculation check soon. So we could throw the value in for T1 and then times it by cosine 50 over cosine 32. And we get, so uh, now the next one is end. And T2, put an arrow, and T2 equals 2. So this equals to T1, uh, the magnitude or the length, times cosine 50 over cosine 32. So T1 vector times it by cosine 50 over cosine 32. Now we throw this inside here, and then plug it into the calculator, you're gonna get a value that is yeah, roughly 64.91 LB, or pounds. And again, this is less than this one, which is expected. That's less, as expected. Because the angle is steeper for the T1, so then that means there's a bigger vertical component. And then the T2, the angle isn't as steep, so it's a less, uh, less of the weight is being carried by it. All right, and now I'm just going to do a quick calculation check right here. So the first one, the tension uh, T1, this equals 2. And again, this is the magnitude of the tension, so it's always uh, positive here. So 100, uh, yeah, this is 100 divided by sine and this one i have it uh, it's uh, in my calculus uh i mean uh, in my one note calculator that i'm using right now it's uh, right now it's default is in is in degrees so 100 divided by sine 50 plus cosine uh 50 or times by tan 32 equals 2 and uh, if i just erase this and press uh equals space uh, so automatically calculates to this degree <laughs> there so that that many decimal places and we have 85.638 so you round that up six four i'm going to put a check mark here so that's right now the next one is right here so t2 this equals two so we take our value i just put that whole thing 
copied and pasted it right here, and times it by cosine 50 over cosine 32. And what we get is to show you, press equal space, automatically gives us this. And this has, uh, look at the decimal places, a lot. So 64.910, and you round that over. So this is correct. So calculation has been checked. So now substituting these values in the earlier vector representation, we obtain the tension vectors. So if we go all the way back up and we have our T1 vectors equal to negative Ti cos 50 uh, degrees times I plus T1 sine 50 degrees, uh, yeah, it's sine 50 degrees J. So this is negative T1, but that must be positive. So let's write this out. Just for completeness, so T1 vector, this is the vector form, equals to negative the length, the magnitude of the, of the force or tension, times by, this is the cosine 50 degrees I, I, and then plus T1, the length, uh, sine 50 degrees J, and now if you plug in the calculator, you get roughly equals to, or actually, I'll just put that right here, actually. Let's plug that in. This is going to be equal to, so when you, when you uh, plug in the values of these ones here, inside here, and solve it, we get, uh, yeah, so we get, uh, I'm going to round this up, it's going to be negative, approximately negative 55.05i plus, and then the 65, Point six zero j j and I'll do a calculation check soon. So that is for uh, yeah, that's for t one like that. Now t two this equals two. Well, it's going to be the positive t two the absolute value or the length. Uh, yeah, so just the length of it or the magnitude times by cosine, now we do the 32. I plus T2, and then this is gonna be sine 32 J, like that. And again, you could just see that right over here when we wrote that over. So this is the cosine 32 and then sine 32, and it's all positive there. T2, and then plug that into the calculator, you're gonna get roughly equals two, and it's gonna be 55 also, but positive, 55, zero, i. And again, notice how it has to equal to this one, because remember the, uh, we had a zero i, so this one has to be the same as this, so they cancel. So notice that they're exact same ones when you plug into the calculator, which is quite fascinating. And now the next one is gonna be plus, and then this would be 34, uh, point four zero J and notice this right here. Uh, this right here, yeah, let's box this out. Yeah, so notice uh, these right here, and I'll do the calculation check soon. Uh, this one here has to add up to be equal to zero, so zero i. And then this one right here, I'll just put an arrow. Yeah, so these two goes down to zero i. And this one here, yeah, uh, just quickly, uh, for some reason, my OneNote just erased everything. But anyway, so this one right here, when you add these up, 65.6 and 34.4, that's just 100. So in other words, we get right here, uh, 65.60 plus 34, let's write it a bit uh, thicker, 65.60 plus 34.40 is equal to 100. Because so you have 60 plus 40 is as an extra one, so 66 plus 34 is 100. Yes, so that is 100, and this one right here, we get a negative 55.05 plus a 55.05, this equals to zero. <laughs> so yeah, that goes to zero, this goes to 100. Fascinating stuff. And yeah, here, just fix that up, and this wrote it better than circle line. Yeah, so that equals zero, and this equals to 100, so it's just uh, interesting. So it's an interesting visual check. All right, and now finally, let's do a quick calculation check over on these ones, because uh, yeah, this is... Uh, when you plug in the calculator, you get these. So this T1 cosine 50 and this negative sign. So, so, T, uh, so negative T1 cosine 50, square, uh, 50 uh, degrees equals to, well, the magnitude of T1 is over here. So I just use the uh, full decimal places here in the calculation. This is 85.64, or, or, or copy that 
into here times by cosine 50. And what you get is negative 55.047, round that up to 0 0.5. So that is correct. The next one is T1 sine 50, so the same one there. Put it in here, sine, times it by sine 50. So you could erase this and press uh, equal space and it gives you 65. So yeah, my OneNote has a built-in calculator, which is quite amazing. This was 65.6026 and yeah, round it up, six zero. Or actually that's rounded down. Next one is T2 times cosine 32. So that's this T2 right here. And we got 64.910 or 64.91 and use a full decimal places just to make it more accurate. Put that in here times by cosine 32 and we get that 55.047 exactly this one actually. But here, because you did the calculations a bit differently, this is the last the digit seven, this one is an eight. So interesting way of computing stuff. So anyways, that's correct, 55.05 when you round it up. And then now this T2, yeah, so I don't know why this got so big. So now the next one is T2 sine 32, and there's the uh, same one, the T2 times by sine now, 32. Uh, just to show you, equal space 34.397, rounds it up to four zero and so on. Yeah, so it's just quite fascinating stuff here. So no, yeah, this, these ones would cancel, I go to zero, this one, adds up goes to a hundred. Yeah, and here lastly, I just added these uh, numbers here. So I added this one here, this one here, so notice this eight, there's a seven, and then uh, this one here, and then this one here. And let's do the calculation check. Uh, we'll go equal space. So yeah, this is uh, uh, one, it's a negative 1.0 times uh, E. This is just stating uh, 10 to the power of negative 14. Yeah, so this is 10 to the negative 14. In other words, that's very, very, Small. That's basically saying zero. Well, it's negative zero, 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 zero. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and there's a one. So <laughs> that's how accurate the calculator is. And now this next one is equals. Oops. Uh, the next one. Let's put a space equals. Yeah. So this one also goes very, very accurate. Ninety-nine point nine 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 all the way to the four. Yeah. So in other words, rounds up to a hundred. And yeah, this is basically because the calculator is just showing you how accurate it is, but this just equals to zero. <laughs> yeah, well, you actually, this does that automatically. So this equals zero. This equals, I'll just put a, see, it automatically puts that equals 100. <laughs> or I'll just leave it like that. So yes, this is very, very uh, accurate.